everybody, I'm back with kind of a different video today. Don't worry, I'm still gonna do High Guardian Spice Part 3. But when the trailer dropped for season two of Hello Boss, I just I just couldn't contain my excitement. <laughs> so a few of you know my M Sona got a bit of a makeover a while ago. Currently not right now because I've been busy, but <laughs> but once the Envy Ring was confirmed to have an ocean, I immediately got to work on what an imp from the Envy Ring looked like. But after episode seven was released and seeing all the Envy Ring citizens, I got a bit underwhelmed by their designs. Not to say that they're not cute or anything, it's just they're all just anthropomorphic sea creatures, which is fine. I mean, they're still cute, but I'm a huge Mer fantasy fan. Like, water type characters are my absolute favorite. I will die on that hill. <laughs> And Leviathan is such a cool prince, like, he's just crazy. And I may have hyped myself up a bit too much and have now kind of caused my own disappointments. <laughs> anyway, sorry, that got off topic. After finally seeing the elevator, after so long, <laughs> we didn't actually see any background characters from the Gluttony or Sloth Ring. It got me really curious, and you know me, <laughs> on what those citizens would look like. Since gluttony, sloth, and even envy are the most complicated sins in demon mythology, the sins are a bit more abstract than what we consider them today. Like eating too much, being lazy, or wanting what others have. That's just the basic definition of those sins. So, so after a bit of digging on the sloth prince, <laughs> I found I ended up finding out a ton of cool stuff about the dude that helped with the designs, which I'll talk about now. Also, I highly recommend checking out Cartoon Universe's Deep Cuts videos. He goes into far more detail about the lore and Rings of Hell and a bunch of other stuff. Honestly, if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't have figured out any of this stuff. He's really good at piecing together everything that's you know, like been shown to us. And I still can't get over he uses my Imsona drawing of him. <laughs> also, I do not claim any of this is canon. This is all just theory and my own thoughts. Please don't tear me apart in the comment section. Thank you. <laughs> now, on to the designs. So, this character I've named Coda. I designed him to be Belphegor's grandson. Since, one, I really didn't want to design the prince and be totally off. And two, because I'm not very good at drawing extremely big characters, if that makes any sense. So... There's not a ton of information on Belphegor's appearance. I was only able to find this picture of him. Handsome, I know. <laughs> His overall appearance is very, um, let's just be honest, underwhelming. But when you read about him, it kind of makes sense. Plus, the thinker pose is a nice touch. Uh, Belphegor is said to have been tossed out of heaven for not picking a side for the war, which is hilarious to me. <laughs> it was also said he'd much rather tinker with his projects than do anything else. There's even a quote from him. <laughs> Weird, I know. Uh, it says, I would rather sit here and invent, finding solitude and peace in my work, than to meddle in affairs which clearly are not suited for my abilities. Why bathe in the blood of your enemies when you can create a machine that could bathe in your enemy's blood for you? <laughs> he's basically the phrase, work smarter, not harder. So seeing as how he's lived in hell for an extremely long time, it wouldn't be totally off if the sloth ring was a high-tech society. Which is why I went for a more futuristic look for Coda. And still keeping with the themes of Belphegor, I kept the long tail with fur at the end. And more human-shaped body. It's weird to see a demon with, like, normal feet. <laughs> As for the hair, I was originally going to give him a more ghostly style. But got inspired by Promare. This is one of, this is one of those movies my friends went and dragged me to. I didn't really want to see it. But the visuals are really cool. Especially the flames. The flame looked so cool and techy. Like... Remembering it, I had to use it. Plus, it helps him glow better since I imagine the sloth ring is mostly dark. What with their sky being like a pinkish purple color. It's been confirmed each ring has a distinct sky color and thanks to the elevator scene, we now know each ring's sky color. So, so I use the ring's sky color as a main theme for Coda's colors with neon blue to blend well. Also, the fashion style I used is a mix of cyberpunk and techwear. For anyone new to this, techwear draws influence from highly functional clothing, sportswear, and military uniforms, and outdoor apparel. Italian designer, I'm gonna say this wrong, Massimo O.T., I wanna say Otis, but I'm pretty sure that's wrong, is credited with being one of the early proponents of the techwear aesthetic. It also got its higher popularity in Japanese street fashion and TikTok, surprisingly. <laughs> 
for Coda's last design element, I did in fact give him prosthetics after learning about how Belphegor, Osmodius, and Maman are actually friends in demon mythology. It got me thinking that Belphegor probably made the blueprints for Viz's arms and the pleasure bots. <laughs> so with that in mind, I figured most sloth citizens would have some kind of body modification and prosthetics, seeing as how everything would be far more advanced than our own. Though, Coda was born without his right arm and leg, so these are not for fashion, these are for functionality for him. <laughs> also, the plates on Coda's horns are for show. They do come off. They do nothing but glow. They're mostly just, like, horn decoration and that's it. And that's it for Coda. Now on to the imps. Now for the imp designs. I knew I couldn't do anything too over the top physically, seeing as how all imps come from the Wrath Ring. I want to be clear that when I say that, I mean like their ancestors, because they look a lot like the description of Satan, and it would seem most demons look like the prince they belong to, but imps, on the other hand, seem to have been able to migrate to other rings and slowly evolve to match the rings they were born and raised in, but still look like the ring they're naturally from, i.e. wrath. <laughs> Hope that made sense. If not, I suggest watching this documentary about evolved birds. Anyway, still keeping with the wrath ring style, I had to figure out a way to make her different enough to belong to the sloth ring and still keep with the cyberpunk theme. I gave her a more sharp edge style by making the horns more square and a flat tail with pixel cuts. As for the eyes, the color is correct, the yellows. They're contact modifiers to make her match her aesthetic, which is caution tape. <laughs> I know, but hear me out. Since we now know the imps are the lowest in Hell's hierarchy, and since I've headcanoned the sloth ring to be this tech wonderland with brilliant people who don't really want to work, <laughs> It would make sense for imps to come in and work on the projects that the citizens don't want to do. Not only that, I've kind of headcanoned that sloth imps are incredibly small in order to fit in every nook and cranny of the city, so they're able to fix any issue that comes up. I kind of based them all off the cute little robots in Wally. -E. <laughs> also, her outfit is also inspired by tech wear, but it's more fashion forward than functional. Hence the bodysuit, turtleneck, crop top jacket kind of thing going on. <laughs> Her boots are just boots, they're not prosthetics. Well, I mean, they're hover boots, but still. <laughs> also, her hair is dyed. I know we haven't seen imps with colored hair other than Viv's imp Sona, but I feel an all-black hair color would be way too boring for her. I also added a lot more shapes to this character. So basically, like, I've given her more of, like, a rectangle style with the X's and... I also gave her neon blue highlights in order to match with Coda because she is, in fact, his assistant. This... I have, a, I have this whole story with Coda. He is Chastity's husband. I feel like I completely glossed over that. But this imp is named Micro, and she is Coda's assistant from his family estate, which explains her over-the-topness because she does belong to a higher family. However, most of the imps that run around in the sloth ring will have a techie style. They just won't have as extravagant tech like she does. Like, And also, the plates on her horns are just for show. <laughs> They are not born like that. I want that to be super clear. <laughs> like, if you guys plan on making your own versions of sloth imps based off my designs, I want to be clear that the, the plates on their horns are just for decoration. They are not born like that. <laughs> so please, you know, I've already had a few people go, are they born like that? And I have to go, no, 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 no. That would be really unlikely for any of the citizens to have that. It's just decoration only. <laughs> but anyway, on to the final citizen. Let's go. Now for the final sloth citizen. Uh, I wasn't 100% into making a third citizen, but seeing as I didn't actually make one, I made a relative of the ring's prince, I figured I'd give it a shot. Now for this design, I really had to think about what I wanted the citizens to look like. Keep in mind this is not how all citizens look. This is just like the basic version of what you would see. I know you all probably would have loved me to make them look like actual sloths, but honestly, sloths are just slow and it's too on the nose. Plus they're not even slow on purpose, so I don't count them as lazy animals and that includes turtles. So why not play on the old myth of counting sheep to fall asleep? Since on one of Araska's tour t-shirts, we know a city is called Dreamsville, 
So I'd imagine it's like a huge VR city or like a hologram world. Think of Pizza Plex mixed with Iron Man's Dad's Park of Tomorrow. So going with the sheep theme, I decided to also reuse the old ghostly hair idea and make him more sickly and kind of wintry if that makes sense. Me and my roommate have theorized that each ring has a different type of weather slash climate, how wrath is a hot desert wasteland, kind of like Texas, <laughs> and how lust is very dark skied, along with being wet all the time. <laughs> uh, raining, I, I mean raining. <laughs> so Envy and Sloth probably have the worst weather, like extreme windstorms, and Sloth having blizzard-like storms, which works with the whole lazy concept since winter makes creatures hibernate and makes me super lazy. <laughs> extra furrier to keep warm however this is not how all citizens look a hundred percent of the time this is like a 50 50 kind of thing this was just me playing with the dark side of being so smart or losing that spark to create kind of like when you have art block for six months and start panicking you'll never be good enough so why even draw again or it could be like in pixar's movie soul where you get so into what you're doing you lose sight of what's important and end up making yourself crazy if you haven't figured it out, I have experience. <laughs> anyway, the techwear style really did help with the design. All the crazy lines make it look more like a virus did this to him. To also expand more on the high-tech theme that I have going on. And if you haven't figured it out, Bruno from Encanto's poncho was a huge reference since I finally got to watch the movie. Super good, by the way. 10 out of 10 would recommend. <laughs> As for color palettes, not all sloth citizens are this like greenish color. I do have a sketch of what the females look like and as you can see her color palette is a little bit different as well. It all just really depends on what color you choose. Think of it as those rainbow sheep from Minecraft. <laughs> you don't know what you're gonna get. Also a little bit more on the females as you can see as you can see their hair is way curlier and their horns are much smaller than the males so do keep that in mind if you ever plan to make your own citizen. Uh also, I'm not very good at drawing backgrounds, but here are all the cities I used as reference for everybody's designs. I also found out that Belfagor has a thing for France, so I'll be very sad if he doesn't have a French accent if we ever get to see him. Because it would be really cool if some rings had their own accents other than Wrath, like, like give me New Zealand accent envy citizens, I crave it. <laughs> anyway, that's all I have for today. Feel free to make your own versions of the designs and let me know if you'd like to see my take on the gluttony and envy ring. Also, don't forget the end of the raffle is New Year's Eve and that I'll be announcing winners on Monday. Anyway, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!